done daily. You can do thousands of people. Well, that's what we understand. John was trying to get across. Heaven is bigger than we could ever understand. It's beautiful. And that's the final thing that we get from this. Is that heaven will be more beautiful than you could ever imagine. I think about creation and, and Eve. And I think about these visions of what it might look like. And I think we have a couple pictures here of nature. We have them. And I wonder how much more beautiful heaven's going to be than what we, we can see on this earth now. Revelation 22, verse 1. This is the last big scripture I'm going to read, so stay with me. Everybody turn to your neighbor and say, stay with me. All right? Listen to this verse. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life. In the water, good. It says, the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal and flowing from the throne of God and of the land. Down the middle of the great sea, city, street of the city, on each side of the river stood the tree of life. Bring 12 drops of fruit and yielding its fruit every year. Now, every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. And they will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They will not need the light of the Lamb, but the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light. They will reign forever and ever. Can we get back to verse 3 real quick? Verse 3 says something really important. It ties, ties in clear back to the days of creation. It says there will no longer be any what? Curse. When did the curse come? At the fall, right? Genesis chapter 3. God said that the ground would be cursed, that there would be thorns and thistles, and we'd have to work the ground. And gals, I'm sorry about your luck. He says there's going to be great pain and childbearing, right? As a part of the consequences of our choice to sin as humankind. That the world will be broken, that there would be tornadoes and earthquakes and tsunamis and things that we don't want, things that we can't understand. And so we have to understand that God is going to restore that. He's going to Remove the curse. Remove the curse. Isn't that a place you want to be? The final heaven. Restored heaven and earth. Now, I want to get to just a few of these questions before we share the communion. So if we can have the rest of the worship team come up. Will we have bodies in the final heaven? Will we have bodies in the final heaven? Absolutely. When Jesus was raised from the dead, did he have a physical body? Yeah. Of course, he could also walk through walls. But he had a physical body that they could touch, that they could see. They recognized Jesus. Some not right away, but after he mentioned their names, often, always, they bowed down and worshipped him. Yes, we'll have physical bodies. I don't think that we'll have broken bodies. I think they'll be perfect. Perfect heavenly bodies. I think if your body's broken or if you lived to 90 or if you got hit by a truck or burned up in a fire, I think God's going to restore your body to a perfect state. I don't think that there's going to be any disease or any sickness. He says that in verse 4 of chapter 21. But yeah, we'll have bodies. Will we know our loved ones? Did... Uh, the disciples know Jesus after his resurrection? Sure he did. Can you imagine a God who would allow us to form all these awesome relationships for our whole life and then when we get to heaven, hey, what's your name? Never seen you before. <laughs> no. The disciples knew Jesus in his resurrection body. They understood who it was. So there will be these relationships. Now whether it be marriage, some of you are going, whoo, I don't know if I'm on marriage. I, I think the Bible gives us a couple indications there's not going to be marriage. I mean, especially, what do you do? If, you know, one of the questions of this Jesus was, well, what if uh, the man's wife dies and he marries her sister and she dies and he marries her other sister? Which one's his wife? That would be a mess. <laughs> right? 
I think it'll be more like we're all brothers and sisters in Christ in a holy relationship that brings much more fulfillment than the ones we have here. What will we do? We found out about that. We'll serve God in His great city. We're all around the earth. Will there be animals in heaven? Will Fluffy be in heaven? Will there be animals in heaven? There were animals of creation, right? God created all those animals and then He said that it was what? Good. Now, do I think Fluffy's going to be in heaven? Mm -hmm. I hope my dog's not going to be there. My dog, my black dog, you know, I love my black dog, but I don't want to take it for eternity, okay? And so I, I don't think that our animals necessarily have spirits are going to end up with us in heaven. You might differ with me on that. I don't see any biblical evidence of that, but I do see in creation, the creation of animals. And here's the toughest one, one of the toughest ones. Will there be possessions? You think there'll be possessions in heaven? No. No? no? I think there will be. It's just that none of you will own them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> technical only. All right, there'll be stuff. But you won't own it. You won't have a basement full of them. You won't have a garage with stuff you don't use. All right? Sorry about your luck, some of you. All right? But we will have everything we need, and we will share everything with everyone. And we will always have what we need. And we won't own anything. And we won't have the right to say, this is mine and that's yours. That's what poisons us. And of all those things, I think the most important verse is verse 7. Would you stand with me? You're right, take me. We get out our unsuitable uh, cup. Before today, how many of you thought that heaven was going to be somewhere else besides here? Doesn't the Bible tell us it's going to be here? Revelation gives us a pretty clear description of the end. And it's God coming down out of heaven. As a, and, and the new, new city of Jerusalem as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And God's going to restore all the brokenness. He's going to remove the curse. One of the most important things I want to leave you with as we take communion is this verse 7. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 21, He who overcomes this, he who overcomes, will inherit all of this. Are you an overcomer? Are you an overcomer? See, I, as, as your pastor, I see lots of people drift in and out of the kingdom. It breaks my heart. I see people drift in and out of a relationship with God, a relationship with an active relationship with the kingdom. And so I want to know, I want you to know in your heart, are you going to be an overcomer who will inherit all this? For God will be your God and you will be his son or daughter. Because see, there's a flip side of that that the writer says. He says, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, that all those people who have turned their backs on God and gone their own way, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. There's only two choices, guys. This morning, you have an opportunity as we take communion to make your commitments about where you're going to spend eternity, and it's going to be awesome. I want you to be there.